It is Wednesday, October 21st, 2020, and I am Pastor Mark Dilley of West Valley Grace Fellowship. I pray that the message today will be used to strengthen you in your faith and encourage you in your walk with our Savior and Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Last week, we ended up at the end of chapter 7 with the verse 758, Part B, which says, Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. And so this is the introduction of Saul, who is going to become later known as Paul, or Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles. And then going on to, at the end of chapter 7, to chapter 8, 8-1, again talks about Saul. It says, And Saul was there giving approval to his death. On that day, a great persecution broke out against the church at Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. And so Paul became the ark persecutor of the Lord Jesus Christ as Messiah of Israel. And he believed in his heart that he should do everything he could contrary to the name of Christ. And so I think most of us know the story. In Acts chapter 9, Paul or Saul is on his way to Damascus because he's heard there are Messianic believers there. This is not some great separation or some new plan apart from Israel. Paul is representing the nation of Israel as far as the Sanhedrin and the chief priest and the king are concerned. Paul is their leading crusader against this Jewish sect of people saying that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. And so Saul was, Acts 9, chapter 1. Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. And we read in that portion of scripture how he got letters from the Sanhedrin to go to Damascus and take it to the synagogues and to take captive anyone who professed faith as Jesus Christ being the Messiah. And so we get to Acts chapter 9 and verse 13. Paul has been struck down on the Damascus road. He's been led into Damascus blinded. He's been there for three days. And now the Lord appears to a Messianic believer by the name of Ananias. And the Lord Jesus Christ tells him, go to a house on Straight Street. There's a man there by the name of Saul. He's blind and he's praying. And I can just see Ananias' reaction. And so here's his reaction recorded for us in Acts chapter 9 and verse 13. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with the authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. And listen carefully. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. Now, do you notice that now the Gentiles are mentioned first? Paul will be sent to the Gentiles. Of course, he's also sent to Israel. He's sent to the whole world with a new message called the gospel of the grace of God. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Go, this man's my chosen instrument. And then verse 16. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias 
went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. Now this conversion experience in Acts chapter 9 is repeated again by Paul in Acts chapter 22. So let's go to Acts chapter 22 beginning with verse 17. It sort of picks it up in this portion uh, continuing on from Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 22 and verse 17. When I returned to Jerusalem and was praying at the temple, I fell into a trance and saw the Lord speaking. Quick, he said to me, leave Jerusalem immediately because they will not accept your testimony about me. Lord, I replied, these men know that I went from one synagogue to another to imprison and beat those who believe in you. And when the blood of your martyr Stephen was shed, I stood there giving my approval and guarding the clothes of those who were killing him. Then the Lord said to me, Go, I will send you far away to the Gentiles. The crowd listened to Paul until he said this. Now these are Jewish, non-Messianic believers. They're, you might call them, lost Jews. They have not embraced their Messiah. And so when the crowd listened to Paul until he said that he was going to go to the Gentiles, then they raised their voices and shouted, Rid the earth of him! He's not fit to live. So at this point in Acts chapter 9, of course, these are not believing Messianic followers, but they want nothing whatsoever to do with the Gentiles. And then again in Acts 26, Paul reiterates his conversion experience. And so here's what he writes there, or here's what he says there. In Acts 26 and verse 16. Now get up and stand on your feet. This is the Lord Jesus Christ talking to him. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen of me and what I will show you. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them. And why is he doing this? To open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. And so three times this conversion experience is mentioned and in each one of them he talks about going to the Gentiles. Let's look at Galatians chapter 1 in verses 11 and 12. Galatians chapter 1 in verse 11 and 12. But I certify you brethren that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man for I neither received it of man neither was I taught it but by revelation of Jesus Christ now again remember the Apostle Paul sat under the preeminent teacher the preeminent rabbi of Paul's time by the name of Gamaliel and so he truly understood the prophecies about the Messiah he truly understood what Christ had claimed, and yet he didn't believe any of that. And so that wasn't what he was preaching. He was preaching 
the revelation of Jesus Christ, and he got it from Christ himself. So what does the Bible say regarding the Apostle Paul and his message and ministry? As we just read, the content of Paul's preaching and teaching came directly from the revelation of Christ. 1 Corinthians 11.23, he says, For I received from Christ, or from the Lord, what I passed on to you. Paul didn't fabricate this, or how foolish it sounds. It's, I've read commentators who said, Well, the apostles already had their niche in Christianity. And so Paul had to come up with some new idea or some little tangent to separate his message from the rest. And that is just farcical. Paul's message came directly from the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a distinct message that was hidden since the foundation of the world and was now entrusted and revealed to Paul to make known to the world. In 1 Corinthians 15, 3, For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 15, he says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. In the Old Testament, the prophet used to say, The word of the Lord came to me. Well, that's how Paul got his message. In 1 Corinthians 7.10, Unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. He wants it to make it clear that uh, this is what the Lord commands. And so first, the Lord Jesus Christ and his heavenly Father chose Paul for this ministry. In Acts chapter 9.15, Christ said, as we read, he's my chosen vessel to take a message. And then in 1 Timothy 1.1, 1, 1, Paul writes, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. And so he, he, he wasn't doing this by his own initiative even. It was all by Christ in God's sovereign purpose for Paul's life. He goes on to say in uh, Colossians 1.25, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God or to bring to completion is what that word really means. To bring to completion the Word of God. And then all the persecution, all the resistance that Paul faced, he says this, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And so being chosen by God, the Lord Jesus Christ sent Paul to the Gentiles. He is their, or our, sole apostle. In Acts 13, 46, it says, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, referring to a Jewish audience. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for the salvation of on the, the ends of the earth. And then in Acts 22 and 21, we've read this already. Acts 26, 17, we've read that. Let's look at some of Paul's other statements in Acts 11:13. 13. Paul says, 
For I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle. Not an apostle, but the apostle of the Gentiles. I magnify mine office. And then in Romans 15 and verse 16, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. In Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 1, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. Ephesians 3, 8, Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And then, in 1 Timothy 2.7, Whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. 2 Timothy 1.11, Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. And so Paul's commission and ministry was to take a heretofore unknown good news. In Paul's gospel, the cross of Christ is translated or is changed from being murder and being killing the Son of God, the Anointed One, to good news. And now the message of the cross is that Jesus died on that cross bearing our sins in his body. And that's the beginning of the gospel of the grace of God. The message today to be saved is not repent and be baptized. That was the message in the early part of the book of Acts. The message for us today is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he died for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day. And if you trust in him and him alone, God gives you the gift of eternal life. That's the gospel of salvation for today. And we'll continue this, Paul's message and ministry, next week. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for making this transition so clear to those of us who see it. And so, Lord, I realize many people don't believe this way, and I'm not saying they're wrong. I just don't believe it. I believe what your scriptures teach, and that Paul was chosen by you to take a message to us called the gospel of the grace of God. And as glorious as the gospel of the kingdom is for Israel and their future here on earth and for those Gentile nations that will live under that reign, ours, I believe, is even more glorious. We have been raised up and seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. And we have hearts filled with praise and thanksgiving for the riches of your grace. Amen.